Good morning and welcome to One Law Memorial Church, 11 a.m. Sunday service. This is the fourth Sunday of, of the month and we'll be going into May. This is the 115th day of 2021 and it's the 17th Sunday. All those numbers mean something. I'm not going to go into it right now, but my title today is Learn of Me. And we're coming from an Old Testament book, Hosea. We're in the sixth chapter, the sixth verse. The book Hosea, the sixth chapter, the sixth verse. And my title is Learn of Me. Learn of Me. Write this up, this book down for me. The book of Isaiah, chapter one, starting at verse 11. Starting at verse 11, Isaiah chapter one, starting at verse 11. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for bringing us 115 days into the new year, Lord. Uh, the the uh, pandemic is not under control, but uh, we've given a lot of people vaccines, Father. And I myself uh, uh, noticed a change. Uh, uh, this morning I, I went to bed at 11 o'clock. I woke up at a little after five. And I can't remember the last time I've slept six hours straight through. And I'm believing it's because uh, I'm beginning to come down. I'm beginning to see uh, some light at the end of the tunnel. And Father, I thank you for that. And I, I pray that others are, are doing likewise. I thank you for holding back the deaf angel that only a, one person who was a member of one Lord was was overtaken by the disease. So, Father, we thank you for that. Now, Father, we ask that you open up some ears. The last time we spoke, we talked, we talked about be careful how you hear. Be careful how you hear. And, Father, today the title said, Learn of Me. Learn of Me. And as I was studying, I came to the book of Isaiah. But my title is Learn of Me, and the book that we're going to look at is Hosea 6.6. 6. But sometimes it's better to go to the end to come back to the beginning. So we're going to read Isaiah and then see where we'll go from there. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. In the book of Isaiah, the first chapter, starting at the 11th verse. The title of this of this uh, this passage in the book is a sinful nation. Can we just say the United States, we are a sinful nation. And I have a question that I'm going to ask you after I read this. I have a question that I want to ask you after we read these few verses in Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter one, starting at verse 11, this is what it says. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifice? Unto me, said the Lord, I'm full of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. And I delight not in the blood of the bullocks or the lamb or the goats. When you come to appear before me, who has required this at your hands to tread in my courts? Bring no more vain obligations, incest and, and abominations unto, unto me. The new moon, the Sabbath. The calling of the assembly, I cannot away with it. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting, even the solemn meetings. Your new moons and your uh, appointed feasts, my soul hath, they are a trouble unto me. I'm weary to bear them. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash, you make, wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doing from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Then that, then that, then that, then that verse. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless, plead 
for the widows. Come now and let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sin be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red as crimson, they shall be as wool. If you be willing, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat good of the land. But if you refuse, but if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. That's war. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. The mouth of the Lord has spoken it. The mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Now we come to the book that we're going to deal with. Hosea 6.6. 6. And the title say, Learn of Me. You must, not that you may, you must read the Old Testament so you can get a real good look at God. Get a real good look. You, you need to look at God before grace. Get a real good look at God before his son came. Get a real good look. He said, learn of me. My question. My question. And don't answer right away. Are we spiritually bankrupt? Are we spiritually bankrupt? And I'm not talking about the world. I'm not talking about the world. Okay? When God speak, he's talking to the church. And when preachers preach, they're talking to the church. Are we spiritually bankrupt? Have coming to church just it's a ritual. We come on Sunday. We come on Friday. We come on Tuesday. We come on Thursday. But there's just something we do. It means absolutely nothing. Hosea 6 says, says for I desire mercy and not sacrifice. And the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Now, Hosea is called a minor prophet. But during his period of 770 to 725 B.C., he represented God. And look what God told him to do. Go and find you a wife who's a harlot and marry her. And she represented the church. Or at that time, she represented Israel. Are we spiritually bankrupt? And he did just what God said. He went and married a harlot. And for a while, just like us, just like the church, just like Israel, for a while, she was a good wife. But, you know, being a preacher, sometimes we have to go out and about. Well, Hosea went out and about. When he came back, she was gone. But everybody was willing to tell where she was and what she was doing. She went back to her old ways. For I desire mercy and not sacrifice. In the book of Matthews, this is seven, almost 800 years later in the book of Matthews. Look what, look what, look what. Look what Jesus said in Matthews 9, 13. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I'm not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Now, 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 Jesus was responding to the leadership of the church, the Pharisees. They wanted to know what these, all these. Self-righteous people, you could be going to their house and eating and uh, and uh, but no, you want to stay with the uh, with the with the with the bad people, with the bad, with the sinners. You want to so you, you want to run around with tax collectors and prostitutes and uh, the low life of the world. Look what Jesus said. But he says, but ye, but he said, but go ye and learn what it means to have mercy. I'm going to give you a little help. I always like to give people a little help. You know, uh, mercy can be wrapped up and grace can be wrapped up in one word. 
It's called forgiveness. It's called forgiveness. While we was yet in our sins, God sent Jesus to go through the birth canal of a sinful woman and walk around sinful people. And then the last words, some of the last words that came out of Jesus' mouth was this. He said, Father, forgive them because they know not what they do. Mercy. Not that they deserve mercy, but Jesus said, Father, forgive them. And we, the church, got to quit running around saying, Lord, be merciful. And no mercy has come out your mouth. I went to a a, 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 a minister's meeting one time and a, a minister there had married a woman who was shoot, 50 years his junior. And let me tell you, we ministers ate him up. But see, no, not, I, didn't, I did not say a word. But guess what? My silence spoke for itself. Because this is what I said. I said, let, 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 let one of the ministers who have more, more authority or who have a more, uh, 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 I don't know, stands in a better light than me. That somebody knows. And uh, the bishop was there. The bishop didn't say a word. Oh, they, we worked him over for a couple of hours. Then we went to lunch. God gave us a chance to think about what we was doing and change our wicked way. But we came back after lunch and started right up on him again. Bishop got weary of us and he stood up and said, is there any mercy? Hey, is there any mercy in this place? For I desire mercy and not sacrifice. You know what? God, 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 God set it up. That, 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 that we couldn't do the law. So he brought in a tool that we could sacrifice animals. And, you know, it, it, it worked for a while. You know, if you if you if you if you if the high priest cut the sheep throat or the goat's throat and tell you to hold it, touch it and you watch the life go out of it, it'll, it'll, it'll work on you for a little while. But after a little while, we go right back to our way. And this is what God said. What are you sacrificing? All the domestic animals are mine. All the wild animals are mine. So you're not really giving me nothing. You know, it's, not, it's not hurting you one iota. Are we spiritually bankrupt? He said, he said, see, desire means to find pleasure. It means for you to choose. You see, see, it's, it's, a, it's a song feeling or attraction. I told the pastor, the pastor says uh, after four or five years of, of uh, discipleship training, he said, uh, he said, Brother English, I'm going to ordain some deacons here. And um, I want to know if you want to be ordained. I said, no, pastor, I don't want to be ordained. And uh, he said to me, why do you, why did you come these five years if you didn't want to be a deacon? I said, it is my desire to know everything that you know. It, see, it was a, 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 I found pleasure. But it was a strong feeling of a positive track. I wanted to know Jesus. Jesus says, if, 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 if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I wanted to know all that I could know. And see, not just part of me, my total being was involved in the pursuit of the knowledge of God. He said, he said, I stand at the door and knock. But if you don't open the door, he ain't coming in. You see? And you say, well, God don't talk to me. See, I told you, be careful what you hear or how you hear. See, 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 if you get close to a fire or if you get close to a light, but let's do the fire. If you get closer, the closer, closer you get to a fire, the more likely you're going to be burned. See? So, so it's just like when I, was, when I was in school, all the classes that I liked, the math, the science, and the history, 
I was up on the front row. But in English, I was way back in the back. Because it, it didn't do nothing for me. I don't want to write no story. I ain't interested in no story. I ain't interested in that. But the things that I was interested in, it's just like they say, John, what did Jesus say? We all in the same room, but I'm going to ask John. You know why? Because John was close. See, if you get close, you can get burnt. But if you get close to a light, all your imperfections can also be seen. But guess what? The closer you get to a light, you can't see. God don't want us to go on sight. It's a faith walk. It's a faith walk. He says, he says, he says, he says uh, in Ecclesiastic, he says, he said, be more ready to hear than to sacrifice. Oh, say, 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 John, what did he say? What do you mean, what did he say? What do you mean, what did he say? You were right there. Was you talking to somebody else? I know when we was in discipleship training, uh, uh, I, I sustained a concussion, and and uh, I not in the in the class, I'm <laughs> outside the class, and uh, and uh, that brain concussion. If somebody is sitting behind me talking, I couldn't hear what the pastor was saying in front of me. All I heard was, <laughs> and it would upset me, and it was upset me, and I would turn around and stare at the people who was doing it. But that didn't do no good, so I had to tell them, I can't hear the pastor because you're talking. See, be careful how you hear. Be careful how you hear. And, and, and he goes on in Ecclesiastic and says, he says, he says, be more ready to hear than to give sacrifice of fools. Oh, I, I'm a, I, and I've said it, and I've said it too, since I've been saved. I'm going to go on and do it, and I'll give a sacrifice. Oh, God, I won't do it no more. Please forgive me. But I knew exactly that I was sinning. You see, one thing about being saved, there's no doubt. You don't have to say, I, 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 I don't know if I'd say. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You cannot be unborn. And, and, and the reason that sinners continue to sin is because if, as you sin, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're searing your conscience. And as you sear your conscience, you don't believe what your conscience says and your conscience don't believe you, so they don't talk no more. You don't have a reprobate mind. Only somebody give you a reprobate mind is God. And guess what? I was studying the other day, and this is what I heard. God will give you the desires of your heart. You desire not to, not sin. So now you have a reprobate mind. Now you don't have to worry about it. But see, ain't no more reprobate mind until the Holy Ghost. When the church leaves, then you can have a reprobate mind. Oh, brother, I, I, I just can't help it. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I was, I was, I was looking today, and I'm just, I was going to share this last. I'm going to share it right now because it came up right now. It says, uh, it says uh, things that I cannot control. And I had a problem with that because, see, I wanted to control my children after they'd left my house. I wanted to control them after they had left my house. I'm finding now that I want to control my grandkids, and they said they grown too. So, so, so I'm in a dilemma because I can see down the road farther than them, and I say, I don't want, I don't want you, nope, 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 nope. God showed me this just this morning. Things that I cannot control, the action of others, can't do nothing about it, Brother English. The feelings of others, can't do nothing about it, Brother English. The reactions of others, can't do nothing about it. The choice others make, oh, see, 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 that's a stumbling block for me because I don't want anybody I love to be crossing the freeway and get hit by a car. I want to say, wait, 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 don't, 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 don't. They can see the cards on the freeway just like you can. Choices of others. The words others use. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I, 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 I tell a young man, says, uh, are you uh, going to pick up behind your dog? He cussed me out. But you know what? Why would I ask him that? He wasn't picking, he hadn't been picking it up. 
Why would I ask him that? My wife, that's what my wife tell me. When you go down there, don't, she tell me, she tell me about five or six things I can't do when I come down to the church by myself. You tell me five, six things. He says, uh, he says, the efforts and goals of others. Everybody. I say, I say, I say, I say, I say, Pastor, why don't they love him like I do? Because they're not you. They're not you. Stay in your lane. And then, then, then things that I can control. Look at this. Look at this. And I'm looking at it too. Things that I can control. My thoughts. Thank you, Jesus. My words. Thank you, Jesus. My ideas. Thank you, Jesus. My actions. I can do that. But look at the one that I didn't think should be there. My reaction. See, we're in control of your reaction. Oh, brother, that was a knee jerk reaction. He stepped on my toe, so I cussed him out real good. No, no. You might be the only Jesus that person see. See, he says, my behavior. My wife is high on that. My behavior. She'll tell me. She'll tell me, too. My goals. See, my goals ain't my kids' goals, ain't my grandkids' goals, ain't my wife's goals, and my goals. My effort. I do everything one way. All out. I do everything all out. My persistence. Lord have mercy. He said, but he said in Matthews again, he said, but go ye and learn what meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. He says, that's what he told, that's what he told those Pharisees when they asked him why he was running around or he chose a, a Matthews, a tax collector, as one of his disciples. He says, he said, I've not come to call on the righteous. You see? Because there's none righteous. But a lot of us think because of our birthright. Oh, my father is the pastor. Oh, my father is the deacon. Oh, my mother is the mother of the church. Oh, so-and-so is evangelist. Has nothing to do with you. Everybody got to open the door themselves. Everybody must be born again to get in. Jesus, I'm the door. And the ticket that you must come with or the passport you must come with. He said, he said, he says, he said, I'm not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. He came for me. He came for me. My wife asked me, we, uh, one Friday we was down here. She says, did you ever think that you would be a preacher? Uh, no. See, that's how you know when God's in something, when it does the impossible, when he does the impossible. And that's what God is into. He does the impossible. I say, I say, I say, I can't do that. And the Holy Ghost said, you can do all things through Christ Jesus. I said, then I don't want to do that. God can't, God can't deal with don't want. Because that's dealing with your, 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 your right to choose. He, God is not going to deal with your right. He's not. He's not. He gave you free will for a reason. And you know what? The only thing your free will is going to say, yea or nay to Jesus. Yes, Lord, or no, Lord. That's all the free will you got. And once you say no, Lord, you're on fast track to go somewhere. Nobody is going to come through unless they come through the door that Jesus opened. He says that he is, he, he is, and he is, he, he's not going to change his mind. He said, I am. He said, but in, 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 in Matthew, uh, the 12th chapter, 7, he said, but if you had have known this meaning, I will have mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. Again, talking to the leadership of the church. For I desire mercy. Isn't that something? He's saying he desires forgiveness. You must forgive. Because, see, if you don't forgive, uh, the, the, the door is still closed. I will never forgive so-and-so. Well, the door is closed. On you. On you. Because Jesus said he did not come for the righteous. And you're saying you're righteous. In that statement, you're saying you're righteous based on the law, which is a lie. Everybody under the law will go to a place. And it's not heaven. And it's not heaven. 
He says, I desire mercy. When God says that he desires mercy because forgiveness, forgive, God forgave them for killing his son. But guess what? God sent his son to die for our sins. All the sins of the world, past, present, and future. Jesus came. I heard a preacher said this morning, the reason Jesus could tell Mary Magdalene, who was brought before him, they believe, were brought before him and said, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. Adultery is a two-party thing. It's two parties. And the preacher asked the question, well, how did the man get away, but they, they caught the woman? Jesus didn't, for, for, Jesus didn't, Jesus did forgive the lady of her sin. And so he said that maybe some people think that we could continue to sin because Jesus will forgive you. No. Jesus told the woman, go and don't sin no more. But he could tell her that because he was going to be the sacrifice for her sins. You see, I can't be a sacrifice for nobody's sins and neither can you. See, 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 see as my pastor said, we're going to barely get in ourselves. That's not true, but, the, it, 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 but, 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 but it's theater. It's, it's theater. We barely get in. And you see, everybody who's born again in the twinkling of an eye, in the twinkling of an eye. Somebody said, well, Brother English, I ain't, I ain't got it all together. You don't need to have it all together. But when it comes time to have it all together, you're going to have it all together. When it, see, nobody's going to get into heaven but the ones that believe in Jesus. Not because of anything that you did. Oh, Brother English. What it, uh, my pastor used to say, this uh, this, 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 this man, uh, uh, he prayed and crawled on his knees all around the church. And he said the people just went wild. He said, I did that. My pastor said, no, God did that. <laughs> God uses everybody. So don't think that you've done anything or came on anything on yourself. The Holy Ghost. Jesus said, I'm going to leave you a comforter. And he's going to lead you to all understanding. Now, how many of us could have married Gomer? That's Hosea's wife. How many of us could have married Gomer? Because he knew what she was when he married her. He, she, 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 was a, she was a prostitute when he married her. But when he went and got her that last time, nobody wanted her. And that's the, way, that's the way the world is. Then take a real good look at that. That's the way the world is. There's going to come a day when your look's going to be gone. Your money's going to be gone. Your power going to be gone. Now, who's going to come and get you? Who going to come and get you? Whoever opened up the door. Jesus will come get anybody. I was in a pit. He came, got me. My mama told me you ought to be ashamed. My daddy said you a P.O.D. fool. But nobody threw me a rope because they could not. This was a pit that only Jesus could get me out. And he came and got me. That's called forgiveness. I could sacrifice. I had no sacrifice to give. See? No sacrifice to give. Learn of me. God don't make deals. Oh, Lord. Uh, uh, even I've done it, young in ministry. I said, Lord, if you do this, I'll do this. God's not in the deal making business. He's not in the deal making business. He said, he said, he said, he says, he's just not in the business. He says, uh, he says, uh, your sacrifices. He's, he said, he said, no, he said, no, he said, no. In, in, in Proverbs, he says he want, he want to do justice. He wants to do justice. How many of us want justice? I want mercy. I can't make it without grace. I can't make it without forgiveness. Because I'll be going along doing good and something will happen. And my actions will be before my thoughts come in. But I'm believing that day is getting shorter. He said, in, in the book of John, it talks about the knowledge. And he says, and this is the light eternal that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou sent. You have to know that. Jesus, Jesus said, Peter, whom do men say I am? And Peter told him. 
He wasn't talking just to you, talking to the disciple, but Peter, you know, Peter is, is, is out there all the time. Peter says, uh, they say all these things. He said, well, that's good. What do my disciples say I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ. And Jesus told him, no man told you this. See, only God can tell you who Jesus is. He said, learn of me. Learn of me. And if you learn of him, you will know. If you just read the Bible, it'll talk about a virgin birth. Way back in Isaiah, they was talking about a virgin birth. And this, this, is, this, is, this, this, is, this is 700 years uh, uh, before Christ was born. See? Over 800 years, really. This is, uh, uh, before Christ was born, Isaiah was talking about a virgin birth. Now, today, if we told somebody about a virgin birth, that, uh, 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 and if your child came home and said it, uh, uh, you wouldn't believe them. And they definitely didn't believe it in Jesus' time. They definitely didn't believe it in Jesus' time. Because we've come a long, we've fallen a long way since then. And the question was asked way back then in Samuel, are we spiritually bankrupt? Look around. Look around. I'm not satisfied in the, in the skin that I was born in. And man has a way to change it. I, 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 uh, the reason that I act up is I have multiple personalities. And, and, and we'll say it. The reason that I, uh, I drink too much or I take drugs is I, uh, 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 I have a, a sickness. I have a sickness. It is true, the brain have doors that should not be opened. The Bible says that, 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 that we can open doors that no man can close, but God can. We can close doors that no man can open, God can. God's only limitation is me. That's why he say, learn of me, and you'll see there is nothing I can't do. Forty years, they walked around, didn't never change their clothes or shoes, and, and, and they looked like they was new. Didn't have to tall or do anything. Food came from heaven. Didn't have to look for water in the desert. Water came from a rock. Oh, Lord. But, uh, but uh, I'm still not satisfied. I'm still not satisfied. A man has a billion dollars. And you say, well, well you're going you're gonna to retire and, and just relax and enjoy your money. Nope. Got to make another billion. The devil lied. The devil lie. It reminds me of that story, the man who, who worked for uh, one of the um, uh, aircraft industries. Forty-some years, never took a sick day, never took a vacation. But he told his wife, when we retire, we're going to Hawaii. Well, he, the day he, that Friday night, they had a, 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 a retirement party from him. Saturday morning, him and his wife was going to get on the plane and Go to, Ve go to Los, uh, 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 Hawaii. Beautiful party. They talked about him 40 some years, never been sick, never took a vacation, but he's getting ready to have one now. Went to bed, him and his wife left the party around midnight, went home, went to the hotel, went to bed. The wife got up and started showering, cleaning up, and, and uh, called for room service, and went, went back in to See why he wasn't getting up and getting ready, and she couldn't wake him up. The deaf angel had came that night, that morning, early that morning. See, we all think that we got some more time. 500,000 people died from the virus, and I'm believing every one of them thought they had some more time. I, 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 I'll start learning of God tomorrow. Uh, 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 it is my desire to do it tomorrow. God said, I will have, I will not have sacrifices. No sacrifice, no more sacrifice. He said, and see, to break it down in enclosure, God is concerned about the attitude of our hearts. God is concerned about the attitude of our hearts. See, see, if your heart 
is right, you can forgive. If your heart is right, you can have mercy because you know you desire mercy. And we are all imperfect because of sin. Not because of God, because of sin. We're all imperfect. But there's somebody who's perfect. And he came and walked just like I'm doing. But he had a heart that his attitude was right with God. He said in his last, last hour, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And they had purposely tortured him. The king had perfectly beat him unmercifully to show him to the people the thing that maybe they would say, that's enough. But they said, no, crucify him. We don't want him around us. He make my beer don't taste good. He make, he, 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 he make the party stop. But this is what the king said. A chief sinner. I find no fault with him. Oh, the Lord. Hey, hey, see, 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 that lamb sacrifice has to be faultless. I mean, in the in the natural and in the spirit, I find no fault with him. He says to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken. Did you hear what I said? My daddy used to ask me, boy, did you hear what I said? And the reason he said that is because I wasn't doing what he told me to do. Did you hear what I said? Are we spiritually bankrupt? And the only person can ask that is you. And it, but, 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 but there's a remedy. Hey, there's a remedy. There's, see, see, God always leave us an exit. He always leave us an exit. Fall down on your face and say, Father, forgive me. Oh, Lord, forgive me of my shortcomings. He said, he said, to learn of me. You got to know fully who God is. God says, uh, says, says that, that, that he can be the most loving person and he can be the most unmerciful person. You choose. You choose. Whom do you want to see? Whom do you want to see? Whom do you want to see? Do you want somebody to come that, 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 that there is no way for you to get out because you are a sinner? On your own, on your own, you are a sinner. And God said, you're like a filthy rag. You are a sinner on your own. But with my covering, with the blood of Jesus, I have no fault. God says, I have no fault. And the devil goes up and talk about us all the time. And God looks at Jesus and Jesus says, he or she is one of mine. And God tells the devil, I find no fault because the only thing I'm looking at is my son and his blood. His, his, he said, I'm well pleased with it before he went to the cross. So he is well pleased. It said Jesus was obedient unto death. A lot of us will be obedience until it gets too hard. My wife left me. It's too hard. The sickness that come upon me is too hard. I lost my job. It's too hard. Anything that you have lost, God said he'll give it to you a hundredfold. He will give it to you a hundredfold. All he wants is somebody who's obedient. He wants somebody who is obedient. He wants you. He said, learn of me and see how fair I am. See how merciful I am. While you was yet in your sin, I sent my only begotten son to die for your sins. Because he was sinless. He says, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. And the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. I told my pastor, I want to know everything that you know. If I go and be around Bishop uh, Griffin or Bishop Jones, I want to know everything that they know. Because what I know will not get me till tomorrow. It's just enough for today. And you have to get it in your spirit. You only know enough for right now. And the only one can keep you from being one step from death is, hey, is Jesus. And if he do not, 
if you have been born from above, in, in a twinkling of an eye, you will go from suffering to glory. From suffering to glory. We can't lose. If you don't believe me, turn to the back of the book and read Revelation. Turn to the back of the book and read Revelation. We win. Believe me, we win. I can answer my question. I am not spiritually bankrupt. I am not spiritually bankrupt because I'm going to hold on to the hand that's holding on to the hand. See, if you got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, hey, you're in good stead. You're in good stead. To obey is better than sacrifice. And to hearken, hearken to his word. Hearken to his word. Lord, we want to just thank you for being God all by yourself. We just love you, Lord. We just love you. We thank you for bringing us from last Sunday to the today. And Father, we're believing if that be a tomorrow. Hey, if that be a tomorrow, you're going to bring us through. And Father, I want to thank you for giving me six good hours of rest. I want to thank you for raising my wife up out of her sick bed. She didn't have a great day yesterday, but she's here today, Lord, and I just want you to just bless her in a, in a special way. Give her that twinkling back in her eye, Lord, and we're going to dance a while. I asked her 51 years ago to walk with me, and we've been walking ever since. And I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do and all that you're going to do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.